Welcome, Ward's Chapel family. We are here again to worship God. We enjoy beautiful summertime, and it's been so great. Not too hot and not having too much rain, right? My son just started working at TJ Maxx, and it is strange. His initial plan was to work there in the beginning of the summer break, but now it's almost over. Due to some application process and interview, I do not know why it took so long. Anyway, he begins to work this coming week. Then I realize that summer is almost gone. So quick, right? Anyway, if you stop by TJ Maxx Mount Airy, look for one, and who knows, you may get some discount, right? I hope you enjoy this summertime, and again, stay safe. Today is August 23rd. This is World Chapel online service. Let us worship now. Please join me in the call to worship. Welcome. It is good to have you here this day. Thank you. We come seeking healing and peace for our spirits. God is with us, giving that wondrous healing love to each one. Blessed be God who watches over us. Come, let us praise God with thankful hearts. Lord, we come to you in gratitude for all you do for us. Amen. Thank you, O Lord, that we are not alone. You watch over us, guide us, 
and lead us in your righteous pathways. When we stumble and fall, you lift us up and gently place us on that pathway again. When we doubt, you surround us with your mercy and peace, reassuring us of your presence through the love of others and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Keep our hearts and minds open and ready to serve you, for we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's reading is about the birth of Moses. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. 
He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. Here are some biblical questions and answers. Who was the greatest financier in the Bible? The answer is Noah. He was floating his stock while everyone else was in liquidation. And second question, who was the greatest female financier in the Bible? The answer is Pharaoh's daughter. She went down to the bank of Nile and drew out a little prophet, little prophet. Get it? Today, we want to read together the story of Moses and the miraculous salvation of God who saved a baby boy from the Egyptian threats. Before listening to my sermon today, I ask you to pause this sermon here and click the other YouTube link that came with the online service video. Then you will find the Moses story there and please come back after watching it. This is one of my favorite animations. The superhero character of the Old Testament was born in the time when the Israelites were enslaved in Egypt. And the Israelites were increasing in population. The Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, was worried about them. They might ally themselves with Egypt's enemies. So he decided to kill all of the newborn Hebrew boys in order to reduce the population. It is such a scary story. There was no way for his mom to save the baby. She had hidden the baby for three months, so she could not hide this boy anymore. Then what could she do? She, this was how the mysterious journey of the boy began. Due to the threat from the Egyptian king, she had to let her son go, but did not know how. She could not hand her child over to the Egyptian soldiers, nor simply give up her baby. Then the story explained that the mother made the papyrus basket and coated it with tar and pitch to cover up holes to make sure it didn't sink. However, it does not mean that she made a good and fancy waterproof device that could protect her baby. No, not at all. It was just a basket made out of reed and could barely keep the water from coming in. It would not work well. Sometimes when we hear the stories of the Bible and even some testimonies of our faithful friends, then we tend to assume that it meant to be good. We know these stories have a happy ending, just like the fairy tale stories, we expect the final phrase. Then they lived happily ever after. So we do not feel the urgency and do not know how desperate they were. People may misread 
this story of Moses, imagining she had a plan to save her baby, but in fact, she had to put her baby in the basket and among the reed, along the bank of the Nile, because there was nothing that she could do. It was not even a plan. She did it because she could not give her baby over to the hands of Egyptian soldiers. This was not a fun and exciting story of adventure or great expedition. But it was a desperate story. The two women, the mother and a young girl, did not expect any hope. What I'm going to share with you today is not about the bright side of the story here, not highlighting the story of salvation and the amazing story of God, but I'm trying to understand this as the story that we often meet in our real world today. In this story, during my meditation, there was a line that caught my eyes right away. It was verse 4. Her sister stood there at the distance to see what would happen to him. She was there without any clue. The basket could sink any time, and some bad-tempered Egyptian soldiers could have found the baby and taken the baby's life. I think Christians should have this attitude, seeing what would happen. Not just simply giving things up due to desperation and disappointment, but we should keep seeing what would happen. We are not sure when God performs a miracle. We might be disappointed because nothing happens then. We do not know. But if we believe we are faithful Christians and we have good experience that God is on our side, then at least we have to have the right attitude and should wait to see what will happen. It is still okay if we don't feel that we have full of faith. In fact, in many cases, we are so afraid and easily get tempt to walk away from the challenges. But look at the young girl in this story today. Without knowing what would happen, she just waited to see. This is very interesting to see how people manage their own challenges. Some just ignore the problem until it becomes a real issue, and others sometimes overreact to the tiny issues. This is the way that I used to do when I had a warning sign on my dashboard or the vehicle. Once it came on, then I tried to turn it off. If it disappeared, then I thought, it is probably nothing. Right, But when it did not go away after turning it off and on several times, then I opened the hood and disconnect the battery to fully reset the system. But you know what? In most of the cases, once the warning sign comes in, it means that something is wrong and you have to fix the problem. This is the story that I experienced. A long time ago, one of my Facebook friends posted, saying, anyone ever been hypnotized, whether it was on a stage or hypnotherapy, to quit smoking or something? Want to try hypnotherapy, but I'm also a skeptic. If anyone has access to magic spells, would be interested in that as well. I know this lady well. She had some emotional issues and other problems. She was kind of desperate 
and kept looking for some religious solutions and spiritual guidelines to handle her challenges. And I had helped her for a while, but things did not work well. Then she decided to look for other options like hypnotherapy. Then her friends replied, well, my mom tried it and it worked. I tried hypnosis to lose my weight, and I've been hypnotized to stop smoking. Hmm. Then what do you think? What can you say about this, the way that people are looking for? I'm not saying this type of therapy is effective or not, but what I want to share with you today is that faithful Christians should see what God does for them with patience. We have to faithfully look at the guidance of God and at least wait until God moves for us and gives us a solution. Then let's go back to the story of the baby again. When the young girl waited and saw what would happen, God worked in an amazing way. According to this passage, the Pharaoh's daughter was down right there to bait, and she found the messy basket coated with tar and pitch. She was probably the only person in the entire country who could save the Hebrew baby from the direct order of the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Then the princess named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. This is one last thing makes us very interested. The name Moses was from a Hebrew word, drawing. And many preachers have interpreted the name Moshe, the Hebrew word, he was drawn from water. However, if the name means that Moses was drawn out of the water, it should have been the passive form of the Hebrew verb, which is Masui. He should have been called Masui, not Moshe. Moshe, the Hebrew word, is an active form. So it means a drawer drawing things or drawing people to water. Then if we go back to Exodus chapter 15, 80 years later from that time, we see the story that all the Israelites crossed the sea. The man with the staff was leading people to the sea and literally drawing himself to cross the Red Sea. Then there was another important witness in this passage. She is Moses' sister Miriam. Probably 80 plus more years now, the young girl who waited to see what would happen to her poor baby brother had witnessed before the God saved the baby by the hands of the princess, and 80 years later, she witnessed again the salvation of God. Just like his name, her baby brother literally was drawing himself into the sea to cross it and leading people to follow his way and God's way, the way of salvation. Then Exodus chapter 15 says this, when Pharaoh's horses, chariot, and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the waters of the sea back over them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on day ground. Then Miriam, the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a timber in her hands, and all the women followed her with timbers and dancing there, then Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exerted.
both horse and driver, he has hurled into the sea. This song is known as the song of Miriam. Miriam has waited for the promises of God, God's miracle, God's salvation. Then now she is looking at the sea and her younger brother becoming a great leader of the Israel people. Isn't it amazing? As the faithful people of God, we should wait for God's work and patiently look at what God will do for us. Sometimes we are also tempted by some solutions of the other people and follow the ways that other people walk. But God is teaching us a clear message. Look at what God does for the faithful people of God. If you faithfully and patiently wait for God's action, you will witness that God is real. God is working. God is still speaking to the people of God. Amen. Remember, brothers and sisters, God is mysterious. Sometimes we do not know when God performs God's miracle. We do not have any clues of the future and when the troublesome moment would be gone. But one is true to all of us. We are worshiping God with one heart and one faith that God is faithful.
God does not simply forget or ignore God's people. So, what we need to do is to patiently see what God will do. God will do some special work for all of us because God called us God's beloved children. And we know God is our Father. God is always with us and gives us God's mercy. Let us faithfully and patiently wait for the miracle of God and God's amazing work for us. Now, the grace of the G Lord Jesus Christ and love of God and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen.